What is up guys, MKBHD here, and what you're looking at is one of the most highly anticipated devices of 2014. This smartwatch is the Moto 360. Now, there are a lot of varying opinions on smartwatches in general as a category, but this 360 is one of the most important ones, and it starts right off with the name, Moto 360. It's a circular shell, 360 degrees all around. Well, not quite 360. There's actually a small bezel at the bottom that just cuts off a bit of the display. But other than that, it's essentially a circle. Now, some people hate this little bar at the bottom. They say it's distracting and it's a design flaw and even a deal breaker. But I found that a lot of people saying this haven't actually used the watch past just looking at it for a little bit. And I found that your eye really starts ignoring it when you get to use the watch for a bit. And I really hardly notice it anymore, even though obviously it's still there. So for the record, this little bar is kind of necessary for Motorola to achieve this design. Behind it are the display drivers and digitizer and the ambient light sensor, which have to go somewhere. And in all other smartwatches we've seen, it's in the form of a thicker bezel. And personally, I'll take this thin profile with the bottom bar any day. So the result of this design decision is a beautiful watch. It's made of metal all around. It's IP67 certified. It's really well constructed. So dust and water resistant. So no worries in the rain. And the thing is not nearly as heavy as it looks. I know it's made of metal, but all the electronics inside are pretty light and it's a leather band. The metal ones are coming later for about $80 extra. So this one overall is pretty light at 49 grams. So it's actually very manageable. Now, the thing is the size on your wrist thing is very polarizing. So I found for a lot of people, you know, I gave it to my mom who has pretty similar size wrists to me, thin, I guess. And her immediate reaction was, okay, this is way too big to, bear, to wear, watch. I'm not gonna wear this, but you give it to someone like my buddy Lou from Unbox Therapy who wears a relatively massive G-Shock watch all the time on a much larger wrist. Switching to a Moto 360 makes it look tiny, so dainty uh, and unacceptably small. So it's something you gotta get used to for sure. It's a 1.56 inch display. I know I'm not coming from wearing any watch previously, so it feels pretty comfortable on my wrist. I got used to it pretty fast, but there are no two size options like the Apple Watch, so you'll have to make this one work. Also, this is the black version. There's also a silver version as well. And yes, if you wear it out enough, you will get asked if it's an Apple Watch. Actually, you can put an Apple Watch home screen on the 360 and it has a functioning clock and everything, which is pretty funny. I'll leave a link to that below. So the only underwhelming part of the watch's hardware is the display. It's okay. It's 1.56 inches diagonally as a circle. Uh, and has this beveled edge around the circumference of the Gorilla Glass. And I, it looks interesting, I guess, but it might have looked even cooler with this seamless edge. And the resolution is 320 by 290, so not a very high pixel density at all. You can easily see the pixels if you look for them, I guess, but the good thing is that it's an IPS display, which means it's pretty visible outdoors. It's much brighter than if they'd use an OLED display. So in pretty much all but direct sunlight, you can see this thing clearly much more so than if they'd use OLED. So I'm happy with their choice. So the software on the Moto 360 is the same as other smartwatches like we've seen in the LG G Watch and Samsung Gear Live. It's Android Wear 1.0. And I'm actually, I've covered Android Wear much more in depth in a separate video. I'll leave that link right below that like button so you can check it out. It's essentially your Android phone's notifications and Google Now cards on your wrist. Now, this is a bit different because it's a circular display, of course, so you have Motorola's circular watch faces and a lot of round elements in Android Wear that really just look better on a circular display. The thing is, there are also parts of Android Wear that look better on a square display. So sometimes notifications text will get cut off a little bit in the corners when you're trying to scroll up and read them. I mean, usually it does a pretty good job of not cutting off any of the graphics, but it's not flawless. And I feel like maybe we could see a split down the road of Android Wear for round displays and Android Wear for square displays, as much as that would suck. Now, the number one thing people have asked the most about with the Moto 360 is the battery life. So here's a scoop on the battery of the Moto 360. Uh, the TLDR is, it's okay. It's not bad, but it's definitely not great. So it's a 300 or 320 milliamp hour battery, depending on who you wanna believe. And it's a pretty large screen, 1.56 inches, compared to the battery size. And for that reason, every single minute of screen on time you have with these watches counts a lot. Now, a lot of people who have been reviewing this watch have been using it a lot. Oh, I gotta test it a lot. I gotta make sure I get the battery life checked out. And when you use it a lot, in fact, more than average, you're going to take a massive hit to the battery. Now, I think I get more notifications than the average person. I get plenty of Twitter notifications, Google Plus notifications, Gmail stuff. I have pretty much everything turned on. So I get calendar stuff, tasks, all these reminders all day. 
So it's going off and it's working the way I guess a normal smartwatch should. And I tend to end the day with around 30% to 20% battery remaining. On a heavier day when I'm turning the screen on more, when I'm using Google Maps navigation directions on here, when I'm checking my heart rate, when I'm checking my steps, when I'm using all these OK Google commands and turning the screen on over and over again, it's listening to my voice a lot and the screen is on a lot. And those days I'll end with maybe 10% battery left or less. But my day goes from seven or 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. the next morning. So if you can bear with it lasting 17, 18, 19 hours before you have to charge it again overnight, then that's fine. You'll charge it every night. Now, a big factor in this is whether or not you have ambient mode on. The difference between ambient mode on and off is when ambient mode is off, you check the screen, it'll show you the time, and then after a few seconds, it'll disappear and the screen turns back off again. And it's pretty sensitive in terms of knowing when you bring it up to your face. Obviously, you can't really sort of glance check it uh, because it doesn't really know when you're bringing it up to your face or not. But when you very deliberately look at the watch, it clearly turns the face on and you can check the time and your notifications before it turns off a few seconds later. If you turn ambient mode off, and it warns you when you do this that this will take a massive hit on battery life, but when you turn this off, it'll leave the screen on, but dimly on, forever, indefinitely. So that's a lot more screen on time. And if you leave ambient mode on, you will not get nearly as much battery life as you would if it was off. Default out of the box, ambient mode is off. And I think that's recommended. I wouldn't really suggest leaving the clock face on, especially because it's so dim, you won't really be able to see it anyway. So you might as well have the face off and save battery. I say leave ambient mode off, you'll get a full day. But if you turn ambient mode on, you will not get a full day. The one really nice thing about the battery though is because it's so small, it charges really fast. So if you get home at the end of a work day and you're gonna go out that night and you throw it on the charger for half an hour, you can get a lot back into the battery and easily have enough to go for the rest of the night. And the next thing is the charging mechanism is pretty awesome. It is officially Qi wireless charging, so you can use any old wireless charger you have, maybe your Nexus one lying around, which is great, but the dock it comes with in the retail packaging is sweet. You put it on the dock, it glows very dimly with the time and your battery percentage remaining, which makes for a nice alarm clock and it looks cool as hell on a desk. I'm a fan of the charging. So I did mention the ambient light sensor is in that bottom bar. That's one of several ways to use the watch when ambient mode is turned off. You can number one, press the power button on the side to wake the display. Number two, you can tap the display anywhere to wake it up. I found myself actually doing that way the most often. And then number three, you can raise the watch up to your face and the gyroscope will detect that you've raised it and it'll light up the display. And then you have the ambient light sensor, which is what you can use to just cover the face of the watch for a second, and that will dim the display for you when you're done looking at it. So here's something weird about the smartwatch. Performance is very hit or miss. Sometimes, and uh, the key word is sometimes, it's flawless, you know, super smooth, never hiccups, and is totally fine. But other times, and it's like 50-50, other times it's really stuttery and drops frames and lags and is janky. And yes, it is new software, Android Wear 1.0, and it's not even a high-end chip, it's a TI OMAP 3, but it really makes me wonder what would have happened if they went with a higher resolution display. Most of the performance problems I'm seeing with the Moto 360 happen right when I turn the screen on for the first time. Makes me think that there's some throttling going on when the screen is off to save some battery, so that as soon as the screen turns on, and if I try to do an action too quickly, the processor hasn't throttled back up yet and it's still kind of in this dormant mode and that's why I'm seeing lots of choppiness and lots and lots of dropped frames. The animations are all there, it just takes a second before they kick in and smooth themselves out, which seems like a problem with the hardware more than the software, but again, this is also first generation Android Wear software, so it's probably a little bit of both. So the summary of it right now for the Moto 360 is really the summary for smartwatches in general. Smartwatches as a whole are not ready for prime time. They're not like a full, complete, compelling package for the majority of people yet. That being said, this is the best one you can get. The Moto 360 is the best smartwatch you can get. In my opinion, I've used a bunch of them. I'll continue to use more of them and test more of them. I want to check out the LG G Watch R. I wanna check out the Apple Watch. So there are some other things I wanna test, but this is the best one I've used by a little bit. If you're willing to go form over function, meaning you like the way it looks enough to deal with the fact that there are some performance issues and you have to charge it every night and it only works with Android phones. If you like the way it looks enough to deal with all that, then this is great. 
this is an awesome smartwatch and I wouldn't blame you for buying it. It's $250, it's not cheap, but it's also not the most expensive smartwatch out there either. I will continue to wear mine because I wanna see where Android Wear moves in these next few weeks and months. There are some updates coming out and I know that the Moto 360 will basically be first in line for those. And assuming that these software updates are good and they optimize battery life and they take care of some performance issues and they work on other uh, differences between the circular and square interfaces, then this will probably end up being a pretty sweet package and I'm glad I got it and I'm glad I have it now so that I get to observe these changes. So thank you for watching. This has been the Moto360 review. If you wanna leave a thumbs up below, if you enjoyed, that would be great. And I'll talk to you guys in the very next one. Peace.